Hello people, and welcome to part 14 of Novaria, our city's skyline snow build. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Thank you for all support on last episode, uh, we worked in our forest industry and brought it up to level 4. And today we're going to build a little accompanying forestry town, uh, in order to get that forest industry up to level 5. And kind of round out, uh, really the first kind of major town in Novaria, this will be... One of the final builds that we'll be doing in the city, we can kind of see now that things are just starting to round out. And um, we're coming to a nice harsh edge here. We of course have our ore build still to do, which will lie uh, within these parts. And of course our uh, main downtown skyline will tether into these two land masses here. And uh, this will kind of just bring a nice little border to this uh, first uh, initial initial town, I guess we can call it, right? It's a town. This will bring a nice little border into the first town and then of course we can start moving into some more rural vibes uh, over towards the dam here, uh, which we might work on soon. Perhaps a little dam town, I think might be quite nice, right? And uh, of course down into the Alusk Valley. There's some nice builds over here, I think, over by the water. Look into that very far away downtown skyline. So plenty more builds to come. But, as I mentioned uh, today, uh, I want to work on a forestry town uh, to sit alongside last episode's forest industry. So, let's set our time of day. It's gone for a nice bit of early morning. Uh, and then let's clear out this that we did last episode and discuss some asset orientation. On a related side note, our bicycle highway is now getting a fair amount of use. Which is nice to see. Some people coming off at different junctions. Always exciting seeing some bike action here, isn't it? Uh, however, I want to start today's episode by just slightly reworking the entrance into the town here. So I think we'll switch out to an arterial road. We're going to come off our road guideline for the time being. Maybe come out by 20 tiles, okay? And then, of course, we'll switch into a one-way road. Grab our curve road tool. And then we'll make a little four deep dash roundabout, okay? And then let's grab a regular road. And then we'll upgrade this into high speed. And allow this to hook back into this national road that feeds back into the farm, of course. And then we'll grab a larger arterial. And then start to introduce some curvier vibes as we come into the town. So I mentioned last episode that I wanted to include the printing press as a, a key asset uh, within today's build. So um, let's have a little look at this, shall we? And let's come off road guideline while we're drawing in. Let's go for a distance of 440. And then we'll feed the arterial along here for the time being, all right? Let's make sure that we're parallel with the highway for the initial start here, okay? And then let's grab that unique factory of the printing press. I'm going to throw this down. Okay. So, of course, asset orientation, always important, always worth discussing. And uh, I think I'm happy with this, this side of it, right? Got some nice red brick, some looks like stained glass, I suppose. A little bit of meerkat press. It's almost like advertising onto the highway as well, you know. So I think I can appreciate this. Alright. It's not too bad from this side either, I don't think. Yeah. And we are going to name this after one of our wonderful uh, Patreon subscribers. Are we going to go for Karina Press? Which I'm aware does sound like a posh upper end apple juice produced in the rolling fields of Oxfordshire. We're going to name this after our wonderful subscriber, Karina. Thank you so much for your support, mate. Really appreciate it. I would also like to bring in um, area naming uh, back to the comment section as well. Um, we'll name kind of specific things and park areas and buildings uh, after our Patreon subscribers, but uh, please feel free to start throwing uh, name suggestions back in the comments again because we wouldn't have such legendary things like Canalavan and the Gold Retrievers All Mine and Gravelin <laughs> without without our comment naming uh, sections. So um, please feel free to throw in some naming suggestions for our, our forestry town here today. Okay, so let's start bringing in some roads and just seeing initially how the printing press starts to perform. So he wants paper and plastic which we are producing both. Um, how much paper is coming out of the forest industry? 
making seven tons of it. How are we doing for noise pollution here as well? These guys are just touching on the danger zone. Okay, so here we go. Here's a forestry truck. Delivering products to Karina Press. And then he's going to head straight back to the biomass plant. Okay. And here comes a oil truck from the petrochemical plant. And he's going to drop off some plastic. Fantastic. So quite easily supplied. Okay. So we may partner a warehouse with this initially today. Okay, so I'm aware that it's going to be quite a difficult build today to factor in uh, two industrial assets into a residential town, but we'll see what we can do. Okay, so I also mentioned last episode as well that I think that the public library would pair quite nicely with the printing press asset. And let's see what we think here. It's the kind of the style of red brick. Let's move our time of day forward just a touch. Okay. So it's definitely the, the combo of red brick here that works well. However, I think what I want is the, the asset and the orientation of the library here is going to be quite important as to how it sits. I think I would rather have it so it's it's lying. Yeah, I think I've got an idea here of, of how I want this to look. Let's start to bring out uh, some supporting road networks as to what we want to sit. And then we'll bring the road up to this. So I'm aligning it with this tile here, right? So we can kind of see where the red brick starts on the printing press. So that's where we'll have the red brick start with the public library as well. Although the library does have a little bit of concrete out in front of it. So it does knock it a little bit further back, but I don't think I mind that. So not centralising the library against a statue or a plaza or something goes against every single one of my detailing instincts, but <laughs> we'll try and we'll try and bear with that, okay? I'm also going to paint out a very small green cities district here and allow some uh, organic car parks to grow. Just uh, a couple outside of the library, okay? Nothing too serious. And we, of course, want to stagger this pattern. I also remember what we're doing. And then perhaps some complementary vanilla path as well. Okay. And then just looking at the entrance to the town here, um, we've got a nice kind of windy arterial road, right? And I think uh, this would be complemented tremendously well um, with just some very basic... Uh, park belt. Okay, let's bring this down here as well. Over into here. I want to name this after another one of our wonderful Patreon subscribers. We will go for Spartan Gardens. Named after uh, the fantastic Spartan Angel, who is one of the OG subs. He was there during Friendwood. Um, <laughs> a true legend. Thank you for all your support, mate. Uh... It's a bold move to be around for that long. <laughs> I think it is, isn't it? Okay, so let's come on to road guideline temporarily. And then we'll just start to hook these guys together. Alright, nice and easy. And then this will just help us really border up against this initial entrance into the town. So I think the car parks definitely help. And the entrance to our town centre here. And now discussing uh, the, the wider district here. I think I want to use European suburbia. So that's what we'll do. We'll uh, bring in... It's not, I've just deleted my green cities district. That's fine. Let's pause the game so it doesn't go away. So I think yeah, what we'll do is we'll separate into two different districts here. Let's have this first one here as green cities. Almost like it's perhaps selling some uh, local produce from the forest area, even though it does more tie in with farming from a gameplay perspective, but you know, maybe the uh, the forest area has a few cherry trees perhaps, and they sell the cherries over here. 
if we do want some at the very low. So maybe let's allow uh, some more organic green city zoning to develop. Now within this space here, let's come back onto road length and angle. And then just allow these natural green city shapes to develop by themselves. Uh, we'll come in and grab some more of that park fence just on our angle this time. Okay, and then just draw these up and around the back of the zoning. It's always a nice little feature in a park area, fine to integrate zoning within the park zone, but fence it off as well. Helps break the shape of the park up a little bit. Okay, wonderful. And then the Autumn District, uh, we're going to go for European Suburbia. And we do have the cycle network over here as well, so I want to see if we can factor a cycle system uh, into the suburbs today. So let's come into our grid and onto our lowest elevation. And we'll come up by three steps, okay? And then we'll bring this over and down here. Where with name road as well. I don't think I'm adverse to this layer of height here. It's going to make sense as well since our cycle network is entirely elevated in this section. Now can we move? Oh dear me, that is not what we wanted to do. <laughs> that will cripple the industrial area. Let's make sure we fix that. Yeah, okay. So we can just move that over. That's going to be a nice straight one down here, okay? Okay, so I have a very distinct idea. Oh, modern art. Yes, please. <laughs> this is the first bit of a very modern art we've had, isn't it? Although it is kind of... No, it's not. I was going to say it's in the middle, but it isn't at all. <laughs> it's directly in the way of the cyclists, but I'm sure they'll live. So, road length and angle to avoid any shattered zone in here. Now, there's some lovely assets within the 2x2 two two pool in European suburbia. So let's first of all formulate our cycle network and how this is going to flow through this suburb. And we'll probably hook it into the farm industry as well. And there's no reason why it shouldn't really hook into there. Yeah, but there's no reason for it to stay at this elevation now. So let's bring it down to just the single elevation point. Okay. And we all know that we do enjoy um, a slightly elevated bike path. And again, uh, for those that watched the most recent modular build, uh, this is a great idea to kind of run your path networks uh, just between two roads and we can decorate out here with bushes and trees which we will do so let's start to map out a smaller road network and then this is really what i'm after here okay so with european suburbia if we were to come in let's make sure we have uh, water everywhere first of all we still have some Old water pipes left over from Exe's development. And some new ones in here as well. Fantastic. So there's some very nice assets within the 2x2 pool of the European suburbia stuff. So of course, specific zoning is always our best friend in City Skylines. Gives us a much more uniform look. And then just what I'm after here is an asset that has like a little pointy roof on it. And it gives some very strong almost like Christmas Village vibes. And we'll see if we can get on in here as we let them grow. Yeah, there we go. That's the, exactly what we want. There's not too many assets. I love how the, the point kind of folds out <laughs> as it's built up. Yeah, you know, but you're getting some very strong Christmas Village vibes with this, right? Okay. And some of them have like a red brick texture on them as well, which is of course going to continually uh, tie into our town centre theme today of the printing press and a public library kind of merged together. And then we'll just allow this to kind of meander over and around here through the wood. And then bring it back down to earth just as we reach the road. Now it'll be interesting to see how many people actually pick this up. There's a way through. There you go, there's already some people. Are they going to collide with modern art? No, just <laughs> just about missing it. That's fine. Are you not in my Green Cities district? No, you are not. 
make sure that you are. There we go. Okay. So yeah, already people picking this up. So we can now see how these little pointy houses, I think are going to be an enjoyable theme for us to work with today. Now let's continue to flash out this grid. So I'll go ahead and get in my repeated pattern. And then we'll come back once we kind of have a full block of houses in. And then we can discuss some, uh, some park and school placement for these guys as well. But we are indeed getting some folks cycling out of the farm now. Let's see where she's come from. So she's going to the company. All the way over here. Which is uh, definitely saving a car journey. So Nevaria's extensive cycle network will continue to see fantastic use. Uh, we can just see now these uh, little pointy houses beginning to repeat with each other. We're also detailing our streets with these assets as well. It's a nice hedges. Uh, kind of looking down the, the lateral line here. Okay. I think that's quite nice. And then let's continue to see if we can squeeze in. Yes, we can. Perfectly, actually. <laughs> that was not planned. Looks like we are on a slight elevation here. Am I respecting the topography? Yes, I am. Unintentionally, I can assure you. <laughs> I did not realise we were on a, a slight bank in here, but... It's barely noticeable, isn't it? And I think it's quite nice as well, you know, it kind of slowly meanders up a very, very gradual hill, this main road. I think we can get on board with that. And then again, there's always more opportunity here for more of our 2x2 two two zoning. Um, so what this will look like now, you know, once we have our 2x2 two two zonings in, you know, with a nice decorated central pathway here, uh, we'll hopefully see uh, kind of the theme and the build uh, come together in this suburb. So let's get the 2x2s two in here, and then we'll see what we think of it. I have also just discovered that if you hold Alt while the forest brush is active and move your mouse up and down, it controls the strength and left and right controls the brush size. I had no idea this was a thing. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> what a wonderful tip. Welcome to heavily modded tips and tricks, everyone. So discussing some initial school placements. I think what I want to happen here is to use the regular high school because it's going to maintain these kind of red brick vibes that we have going on in the town centre. Now, these are all assets that work really nicely together. I'm thinking of doing something like this for the next detail in modular build. Um, assets, kind of perfectly paired assets will be the title of the video, I guess. Um, and there's three right here, printing press, public library and high school. Okay. Not bad. Let's run with the high school there. Uh, we'll, of course, complement it with some park assets. Let's go for... Perhaps a skating rink next door. And a tennis court. Be an extremely dangerous game of tennis, I think, with that much ice, but... Let's not worry too much about the logistics of it. Okay, so we can bring them onto their own road, and let's discuss for the first time today, perhaps, uh, some smaller detailing palettes, and... Let me bring a road out here, okay? And we can perhaps tether our elementary a little further down that. So we'll have a little road. No, we won't. We'll have a little pathway that comes through the middle with no road length. There we go. And let's bring in some farm fence patterns into the grid. Okay. Box these in. Really simple. Kind of basic standard decoration at this point. And perhaps some green tree. Prop line tool in here as well. A little something like that. So some of these houses are levelling up and they're losing their little pointy roofs, but I don't mind that. I think I'm fairly happy with it. Okay. So we've got some space behind the library. Uh, perhaps a post office would work nicely here. Get okay, a fantastic corner asset. And if we dare, just complement with some basic 
commercial zone in. So that commercial asset there is going to be very important as to what we allow to grow. How are our little 2 by 2s doing here? Nearly time to fill in the rest. And again, this is a nice corner asset and it's red brick. Yes, please. That's, uh, <laughs> that's fate, isn't it? That is asset fate. Marketplace, best food service. Yeah, wonderful. Certainly a red brick town centre, this one, isn't it? Let's go for elementary school in the middle with a large playground next door. Okay. Don't think I'm totally adverse to that idea. Now, I would like another entrance into the town. So let's work on this idea. We probably will have to very temporarily break our cycle network. So we'll bring this in here and then do we just want to hook straight into... We do, but we'll have to slightly rework the national road to fit this design, which is fine. There we go. Just uh, adjust the node slightly. And then of course we want no traffic lights here. So there's two ways in and out of the town now. Not everyone's going to bottleneck through that initial roundabout. And then I don't think I'm actually loving the use of arterial road here. So why don't we switch down into asymmetrical. Yeah, let's do that. We'll see how this performs. If we need to switch the orientation of the two lane then there we can do depending on how on how it's going to work and then how are we doing for uh, garbage processing in the city we're just about to drop into the yellow so this would be a nice point to perhaps bring in a dirt road okay and then let's bring it off on a slightly deeper angle and then we can now meander bicycle in, back down to the crossroads, and then just very briefly discussing some possible decoration palettes at the uh, country junction here. I guess we're not quite totally rural yet. Let's bring in some nice nature reserve fence patterns around the junction perhaps. Okay. With a splatter in well, snowy tragic bushes, a couple of rocks as well perhaps, only sparing with the small ones and some smaller trees. Alright, so I just think these little blemishes of detail alongside these little road signs here are going to uh, just help introduce the tan a little bit, right? I think we can appreciate that. So I think along this little dirt road here, I want to include a little recycling centre. Just know not only to start increasing the various uh, garbage processing capabilities again, but just as a little kind of micro-industrial area within the town, right? And then perhaps uh, some lighter uh, zoned industry, which is <laughs> something I very rarely use. Uh, but we'll, we'll use it for a detailing purpose here, okay? And then perhaps let's bring some more kind of smaller dirt road networks off. And then bring in some more of that organic industrial zone as well. And we'll, we want to be very uh, historical with our assets here. These kind of smaller factories and warehouse looking ones are more than okay for what we need. A box factory as well. Is that too big? Yes, that's too big. We don't want that one. <laughs> Those are the ones that we don't want. And then let's come into my grid. And then I think I'll just start lining this industrial area with some vanilla gravel path. And then spatterings of overgrowth around them. Okay. Let's run a similar concept. Up this way too. 
Okay. Just as some almost like tainted ground between the industrial area with some smaller rocks in between. And then what we'll do is we'll grab some forestry fence into this area here. Of course we're gonna get the weird snapping with the bike pathways, but that's still gonna be okay. And then we'll bring in uh, some conifer forest as well. Okay, just kind of surround this industrial area. No trees within the zone itself. Okay. Not bad. So just a very small micro patch of industry over there, right? But the box factory has come back in. Looks like that specific zone in tile isn't really what we're after. Let's maybe switch this out for a 3x3 three three instead and then perhaps a more quirky zone in there. But, you know, it's a little, very small, run-down pocket of industry. You kind of get the vibe here with these little boxes outside and you know, the, the brown on the ground with the snow poking through and very overgrown. It's definitely what we want to happen over here. Okay. And then possibility again for some part placement here. Oh yes, please. Cannot refuse that. <laughs> if, it, if it fits, we sit, right? And we can just expand these part pathways now. Discussing a little decoration palette for our centralized Cycle network. I think do we want to run with conifers? I imagine we probably do. And then we'll just repeat that on this side too. Lining them up as best we can. And we'll see what we think here. Yeah. Cycle Network's getting some decent use too now through this area. I'm fairly happy with that. And then the... I have set the warehouse to store plastics as well. I think we can probably up the production rate on Karina Press. It's, uh, it's staying fairly well stocked. See that? He just popped out and dropped off some more plastic. <laughs> that's great. That's what you want to see, right? Very nice, that's going to continue to make us a ton of money. The farm area is struggling a touch. What are you struggling with? Is it crops? And you do have some banked here. I think we maybe have too many cow fields here, you know. Might have to switch some of these out for large animal pastures. Rather than using the small ones here. It's probably a job for a live stream to reconfigure the road network a little bit. Yeah, they, they do get stocked, but there's a fair amount of time where they're not stocked, so I might have to relook at that. Okay, and then just to finish the town designs, why don't we kind of continue this run along here with a nice big batch of commercial zoning to shelter the view to the highway. And then we can bring this very dense conifer forest around the back of the high school too. And I guess this road makes no sense here. There's no reason that this should be arterial. Although these do look a little strange now, don't they? I think we can live with it though. Okay. But otherwise, traffic's performing nicely here now. Let's see what the work account is like on the forestry. Yeah, so this is coming up now. We're up to 6, uh, 19. And uh, we were hovering around 5.30. Uh, last episode so slowly moving up as this town grows okay very nice indeed uh, let's have a look at some uh, final residential zoning patterns here uh, before we move into something of a detail in time lapse today i think i'm happy to keep my little two by two at zonings within it's a weird connection let's see if we can redraw that in There's too many pillars there there we go two by two european suburbia pattern here uh, we will need to be careful 
alongside this road because of the noise from the highway, but I don't think we'll extend it too much further down that way anyway. So yeah, let's get these in. I will definitely start moving into, I guess, Novaria's version of Dawson over the next couple of episodes. And perhaps develop a little rural waterfront down here, over by the river. I also want to develop, uh, which I'm going to try and do myself, uh, won't ask Imperator this time, <laughs> for a 4x4, four four, um, or a 4-way uh, interchange uh, to develop here. Uh, I want to feed over this way. I might even feed the highway through the mountain and then bring it into a connection over here somewhere. Okay, and then uh, another direction uh, coming over the river and then running parallel along this mountain uh, to eventually hook in to here. So we'll start to look at some uh, larger highway expansion uh, to bring kind of a, a big highway loop from this point down to here where we'll have a hopefully <laughs> an impressive overcharged egg four-way interchange here and then bring it up this way as well to connect in uh, so just preparing those highways to start handling larger volumes of that tra of traffic as that downtown uh, appears to well begin to make itself known anyway yeah you guys aren't european suburbia that's fine let's make sure we actually uh, grab the right district but yeah super super busy cycle network now and let's have a little brief look at the city statistics and see how we're doing for cyclists Yeah, so it looks like as we're starting to bring in the more significant cycle infrastructure, we're getting these larger spikes in cyclists now, aren't we? Yeah, very nice indeed. Okay, however guys, that does feel like a good place for a detail in time lapse. Quite a short episode today, I think. It is uh, quite a short build, um, but I think we've discovered some uh, some nice key themes today of um, combining uh, similar looking assets to form a town centre around a unique factory. But yeah, I'm fairly happy with it. But either way, detailing, uh, we will bring the natural Navarian conifer forest back up to this side so it serves as a very harsh border um, as we move away from this town now. Uh, detail the roundabout, of course. Uh, throw down some park assets uh, within this space here. Perhaps some complementary commercial on these corners as well. Uh, bring in some highway detailing with our zoo fence to run through the middle. Probably some decorative trees in these spaces too. I develop some organic looking green belt to link the suburbs through to the uh, elementary school. And all our usual other little uh, detailing uh, bits and pieces for the time lapse. But let's detail it up. And then we'll see what we look like come the end. Oh,
But hey guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, a like below is always appreciated, as are comments and shares too. Equal so much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well. Really happy with this Fauci town and the experimentation of some 2x2 two two European suburbia zoning and the wonderful discovery of the fire station which I've added in as well, alongside the high school, public library, printing press or Karina press and a few of the commercial assets, all of which have that red brick vibe uh, that really serve as a nice introduction or town centre if you will uh, for this little forestry town. On Sunday's live stream we will continue to detail uh, the area between these two districts and hopefully bring our forestry area up to level 5. Uh, with this expansive population it shouldn't be that far away now and we think we're at about 700 workers in the industry area. Uh, so just a touch more population around this area should see us up to the final level. I want to thank you all so much for the support on the most recent modular build as well. Um, it's nice to see that you guys were uh, interested in having some modular detailing tips integrated into that series. And as I mentioned today uh, we may do do a kind of perfectly paired assets detailing and modular build. So if that's something you're interested in, please let me know in the comments as well. Otherwise, I will shut up and I will leave it there. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.